Proverbs 3, we'll start there. Uh, this is not going to be the Song of Solomon series on the couples tonight. Uh, this morning, the Lord kind of led me a different direction and uh, kept the, the junior church in here. And I preached to the kids this morning about things that the devil won't tell you. And in that, I made a statement about the decisions that y'all are making today will affect you tomorrow. How important it is, uh, the decisions you make today, whether I drink or not, whether I smoke or not, whether I run with this crowd or not, who's my friends, who am I going to allow in my circles, those decisions that you make today will affect you in the years to come. They can either break, make your life or break your life. That's how important those decisions are. And uh, thinking about that, I, I, I decided what I was going to preach on tonight was uh, how to make wise decisions. I told you how important they were, but I didn't tell you how. I didn't try to help you how, to know how to make a wise decision. So tonight it's almost going to be a Bible lesson, but I'm going to preach on the thought how to make good decisions. Proverbs 3, if you will. In Proverbs chapter 3, we're going to look at uh, one verse. Proverbs 3, look at verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, now watch, and choose none of his ways. Turn to Joshua 24. Talk about a choice. Uh, the older you get, especially you younger ones, the teenagers, and uh, uh, the older you get, the more decisions you're going to be making in this life. Uh, as you begin to grow and mom and dad learn that they can trust you, they'll be giving you more responsibilities and you'll be making more decisions for yourselves. And those decisions are very important. Joshua 24. Joshua 24. Those decisions are very, very important. Joshua 24 and verse 15. This is Joshua speaking to the children of Israel. He's made up his mind, but the children of Israel are flip-flopping. They don't know which way to go. Look what he says. If it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua was a man who could make a decision. Many people today have trouble making decisions. Uh, we're going to talk about that and how to find help making a decision. What if you're faced with a decision and you don't know which way to go? How do you handle that? We're going to look at how to make some good decisions. Life is full of decisions. You make decisions every single day of your life. When the alarm clock goes off, do I hit snooze and roll over or do I get up? That's the first decision. Then, next decision, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? Am I going to eat breakfast? Am I going to work? Am I going to school? Whatever you do, it's decision after decision after decision. You think you're not making any decisions, but you are. You decide whether to face the day happy or angry. You're, you decide what kind of attitude you're going to have that day. Well, they got up on the wrong side of the bed. You can't blame the bed. It's a bed. It don't do anything. You laid on it all night. Not the other way around. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so stop and think about some things. You make decisions all the time. Successful lives are based on good decisions. And many times when you find someone on the street, homeless, has, has wrecked their life, wrecked their marriage, wrecked their health, it comes down to they made some poor decisions. Poor decisions. They decided they were smart enough they didn't need school anymore. They decided they were smart enough they didn't have to listen to mom and dad anymore. They decided that they were old enough to decide whether to drink or not. They were, they were big enough whether or not to do this drug or that drug. They made that decision and those bad decisions led them down a bad path. As Christians, 
You should want what God wants for your life. What does God want from you? God made you. He made you for a purpose. Do you know what that purpose is? I'll tell you, making good decisions will not come without God seeking God's counsel. And God's counsel isn't mysterious, but it has to be earned. He's not just going to get a neon sign so when you wake up in the morning, it's flashing to you what He wants you to do. His will for your life is going to be found in His Word. And if you don't spend any time in His Word, don't expect to find His will for your life. Because that's where it's at. What does God want from you? Well, He wants you to get saved if you're not saved. Then He wants you to read your Bible. He wants you to pray. He wants you to attend church faithfully. He wants you to partake of the Lord's Supper and be baptized. He wants you to tithe. He wants you to come out from among them and be ye separate. He wants you to live clean and holy. He wants you to soul win. There's so many things He wants from you, but He's got blessings for you if you'll do those things. He will give you His will for your life. He will show you and guide you as you do what you're supposed to do for Him. So some things you don't have to decide. Uh, it, 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 in my house, when the kids were growing up Sunday morning, it wasn't, are we going to church today? No, it's Sunday morning. They got up and started getting ready. They knew we were going to church. Why? The decision was already made. It was made years ago. Amen. And they had learned that was the decision of the house. We were going to serve the Lord. Come Sunday morning, we was going to church. Unless it's bleeding. And then we get some duct tape, tape it up and go anyway. Amen. <laughs> uh, we went to church. Mistakes made by most Christians today is they want to live their life for themselves and still want God's blessings on everything they do. You don't want to do what God wants you to do, but you expect Him to do what He can do for you. That's what's wrong with most Christianity today. It's like working for a boss man. You're no good to the boss if you do what you want, when you want, the way you want. When I punched in at work, now here's some good stuff. This will help some of you younger ones. When you get a job, if, if, unless you've got the title boss man, you ain't the boss. <laughs> Amen. When you punch in, you belong to them for that eight hour, ten hour shift, whatever that, whatever it is, determined that you're to work. When you punch in, it ain't time to go sit down and text. It ain't time to get on the phone. It ain't time to search the internet and keep up with Facebook and all that stuff. No, you're supposed to be working, doing what you were hired to do the way the boss said to do it. Amen. You say, well, my boss is an idiot. I know a better way. Evidently not. He's the boss and you're not. He learned to do it the way his boss said and eventually he got promoted and then he could do it the way he wanted to. If you do like you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, the way you're told to do it, then one day you'll get to decide how to do it. Amen? Then you'll get to be the boss. Now, if you show up whenever you want to, do it the way you want it done, not necessarily the way he says to do it or she says to do it, how long do you think you're going to keep that job? Not very long. How, how, how well do you think you'll get along with the boss? Not very good. Well, guess what? God's the boss. Amen? Amen. God's the boss. We're to do it His way. We've been bought with a price. We're not our own. We're to follow Him, not Him follow us. We're to do what He says, when He says, the way He says. And until we do it that way, why should He give us time of day when we're praying, Lord, give me direction. He's already given you a list of stuff to do and you won't do that. Do what you know to do today and He will reveal to you what He wants you to do tomorrow. Just do what you need to do today for Him, what you're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. Some of you need to decide right now. Right now. I mean today. Some of you need to decide right now, I'm going to live my life for the Lord. 
I'm going to live my life for the Lord. Make that decision now. Why? Because you don't know what temptation may come tomorrow that leads you away from it. You don't know what you may be faced with next week or next month that would lead you in the wrong direction. But if you've already decided today that the Lord's the most important thing in my life and I'm going to, get, I, I'm going to dedicate my life to the Lord and I'm going to serve the Lord, I'm going to follow the Lord and determine that in your heart today, that decision's made. You don't have to revisit it. I didn't have to revisit that decision every Sunday that my house was going to church. Why? I made it clear we're going to church. I've decided that. Me and my wife decided that together as a family. We're going to church. And come Sunday morning, everybody got up and everybody went about their ways, uh, getting ready and doing their normal Sunday morning routines. Why? Because the decision had already been made. I'm going to skip some of this for time's sake because I've got a lot to say, but I, I will get into this. I'm going to give you ten things. No fancy outline, just ten things as quick as I can give them to you. Give you a couple verses. We might look at a couple of them, and, and, and then we'll, we'll close and go to the house. Amen. First of all, in making a wise decision, in no particular order, here's some things you ought to ask yourself. Jot them down if they speak to your heart so you'll remember them. But the first thing you ought to ask yourself is, will this decision please God? If you're faced with a decision and you want to know whether it's the right one or not, does this decision I'm making, will it please God? Will it lead me to pleasing God? Will it please God? You want an illustration? Maybe some young girls are debating on whether to see some boy. Will seeing that boy please God? Will seeing that girl please God? Will doing that please God? Will it bring honor? Will it bring you closer to God? Will it please God? Will it please Him? Say, how will I know if it pleases Him? Spend some time in this book. That's how you're going to know God's will for your life. That book's more important than you ever thought it was. The older I get, the more I see fulfilled in this, the more I see that this thing's been right. Years and years and years, decades, centuries ahead of its time, everything in that book has proven true. And he's wanting to talk to you. And you keep running from that book. You'll read magazines, you'll read junk books, you'll read everything you can get your hands on, but you won't pick that one up. Why? Why? Why won't you pick this one up? Amen? That decision you're, you're faced with, can you give God credit for it? Will it make you a better Christian? Will it bring you closer to God? Will it give you a good witness? Will it hurt your testimony? Is it what an ambassador of Christ should be doing? If it don't glorify God, then why do it? then why do it? Much like I said, if they're not marrying material, they're not dating material. Amen? If it don't glorify God, why waste your time with it? Amen? Number two, would you ask Jesus to do it with you? Would you ask Jesus to do it? Whatever decision you're making, if it's to take this job, would you say, Jesus, would you, would you work with me? Would you, would you be willing to walk with me every day in this place? Would you be willing to walk with me on every date? Would you be willing to go wherever I go, whatever I've chose here? Would you be willing to go with me? Be with me. Here's something that will help you, kids. Don't do anything that you... Don't do anything away from mom and dad that you wouldn't do in front of them. Did you get that? Don't do anything with your friends that you weren't willing to do in front of your parents. That's drinking, smoking, cussing, pornography, filth of this world. Don't do anything 
that you wouldn't be willing to sit down and do in front of your parents. Maybe your parents aren't good parents, or maybe they let you do some of that stuff. Don't do anything you're not willing to do in God's presence. Because He's all present. He's all seeing. I'm trying to help you make good decisions. Good decisions today will give you a better tomorrow. It'll help you walk closer to the Lord. It'll help you get the Lord's blessings on your life. Amen. How about this? Is it your idea or is it God's idea? Was it your choice? Was it your idea to choose this or did you seek counsel? Is it his choice? Number three. Does it grieve God? Ephesians 4.30. You don't have to turn there and jot it down. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. We love to quote that verse. We love to read that verse. We love to preach that verse because it talks about how we are eternally secure in Jesus Christ. We're sealed to the day of redemption. We can't lose our salvation. We love that verse, but we often forget the first part and grieve not the Spirit. Making good decisions, ask yourself, does this decision I've just made, this choice I just made, does it grieve the Holy Spirit? Does it grieve Him? Young people, I'm going to tell you, you're going to need Him. You're going to need Him when you go through life. You're going to need that leading and that guiding. There's going to be times you're not going to, you, you're not going to be able to be the husband or the wife you, you want to be. You're not, you, you're going to, things is going to come up in life and you just don't know which way to turn. But you've spent all your life making bad decisions. All your life doing it your way. All your life grieving the Holy Spirit. And now when you need Him, you've grieved Him so long, He's gone. I know doctrinally He's always there. But spiritually He can be gone. Your prayers can be like brass. Not make it through the ceiling. Read not the Holy Spirit. Here's something that may help you. I don't know who first said this or who, who to give credit to. I heard my pastor, I heard Dr. Rudman say this same thing. I've heard many preachers preach along these lines and say this same thing. And it's so true. Never make a major decision in a storm. When things is hard, when you're hurt, when you're angry and upset, it's not the time to make a major decision. You want an illustration to prove how true that is? How many, how many times have a husband and wife got angry at each other and say stuff they can never take back because they made the decision to say that in anger? I don't know of a, a situation where a man said, that's it, I... I, I don't want to hear no more of it. I'm tired of you nagging. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. I'm leaving. I'm gone. I want a divorce. And he storms out of the house and gets in the car, spins down the driveway, hears the tires squawk as they hit the pavement. He's gone. He cools off in about a half an hour and he thinks, man, that was a little harsh. And he comes back and finds his stuff sitting outside. She wouldn't take him back. You said you wanted a divorce. You got it. How many times has somebody at work got mad at the boss man and pitched a fit and walked out of work and said, that's it, I quit. Then go home and get to thinking, what about my kids? What about the bills? What about, what am I going to do for a living? I can't get a job that pays as much as this one. I can't get a job that will work with me like this is work with my schedule or something, whatever's going on. And they think, oh no, I made a mistake. They show up work the next day and the boss says, what are you doing? You quit. Get your stuff and go. I'll call the police if you don't get out of here. You quit. Decisions made in a storm are often not very wise. You will let your emotions, your anger, your hurt, your pain decide for you rather than your brain. Amen? Never make a decision in a storm. 
Number four, how will this decision affect others around me? Believe it or not, you've got a brother or sister that's looking up to you. You've got a niece or a nephew. You've got a friend at work. You've got a friend at school. Someone's looking up to you whether you realize it or not. You may be on the bus and you're in an older class than some other kid and they're looking at you and you're the coolest thing. You're just, dork, just as dorky as dork can be. But to that kid, you're the coolest thing they've ever seen. They want to be just like you. And the decisions you make today may influence them. It may be a little brother or a little sister coming up behind you. And the decisions you make will affect them. Well, I, it's only going to hurt me. Nobody lives to themselves. Decisions you make can hurt others. You, when you're married, any decision you make affects the whole family. Guess what, kids? Any decision you make now affects mom and dad. Mom and dad love you whether they tell you or not. They love you and care for you. Amen. And they don't want to see you hurt and making bad decisions. And those decisions do affect those around you. Here's one. 1 John 2.15 We're told not to love the world neither the things in the world. So ask yourself this question. Would it be considered worldly? What I'm deciding to do, would it be considered worldly? Is this a worldly decision? Worldly. You say, what do you mean worldly? Is it what everybody else is doing? I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. If this world is embracing it, you better step back and look twice at it. Because if this world loves it, something's wrong with it. Because this world is right the opposite of this book. Amen. This world is going right the opposite of this book. We're to follow Christ, and this world is not following Christ. This world set on fire of hell, to be honest with you, and that's the course it's running. And when it embraces something, and all the world embraces something, and there's a new fad, it seems like everybody jumps on board without even thinking about it. If the world loves it, and the world's behind it, and the world's making a big deal out of it, transgenderism, homosexuality when they start making a big deal out of something that should be the first clue something's wrong with it it doesn't matter if all the world embraces it what does the Bible say about it what does God say about it is it worldly is it worldly listen I say this to the king's kids and stuff in the junior church many times when they're going out I, like I say, sometimes I do more preaching during the announcements than some preachers do during the preaching hour. Amen? I, I'll say something to them like, you're king's kids. You know why we call them king's kids? Because we want them to know they're a child of the king. Amen. And as a child of the king, they set the standard, not follow the standard. As a child of the king, we set the fad. We should be the ones they're following. Not the other way around. Amen. Not following the world's standards and falling for what the world does. Amen? We should be following the King of Kings. Amen. We're a child of the King. We set the standards. Number six. I'm hurried. Number six. First Thessalonians 5.22 says to abstain from all appearance of evil. So the next logical question to ask yourself does it appear evil? Not is it evil? Well, there's nothing. It's not a sin. It's not wicked. Does it appear that way? The very appearance of it. They laughed at me and gave me a hard time sometimes at work when I was working at the dealership because I didn't want to ride in a car with a woman. Many times as a mechanic, we'd have to get in the car and go on a ride so they can show us what the car's doing. I would always say, well, what speed was it doing that? Well, it was around 45 miles an hour when I was turning left. It did it. I'll show you. Well, you just tell me. I'll take it out. And I, I, I want to be able to feel it. I, I always tried to make an excuse. And I would go out and try to find it myself. And they would laugh at me because they knew what I was doing. Because if a guy did it, I'd say, oh, show me. 
And I'd hop in and let him show me what he was doing. I'll never forget the greatest one of all was a medical doctor. He come in, he come in, pulled into the garage, he got out. He was in a hurry. He was supposed to be at the hospital. He he he, he had his suit jacket on and he said, I've got a noise in my car and I'm afraid to drive it. Can somebody ride with me? So they called me and asked me to go ride with him. I said, when's it doing? And he says, I, I don't know. What, well, what speed? Do you know what gear you're in? Is it a right turn or a left or anything? I, I don't know. It just does it just whenever. I said, okay. So I get in the car and we'll go down the road. I'm listening. This car's quiet. I mean, he's got a Lincoln Continental air ride suspension. This thing is floating. It is so quiet. Nothing. He rides me all over town. Nothing. He says, well, I guess I'll take you back. And he took, took me back, got out, and went in, told the boss man nothing. I said, that would just cool me off, you know, right around the air conditioning. That's all I got. And I go back to work, and he pulls right back in. It did it again. It did it again. So I drop what I'm doing, get back in the car, and I'm going down the road. And we got about halfway through town this time, and I hear a noise. And I looked at it. That's inside. And I looked in the back seat. He had another suit jacket laying in the back seat. It had his pager in it. The hospital had been paging him, trying to get him to come in, and he's riding around. What's that noise? <laughs> <laughs> Just crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. I don't know why he told you that, but that was funny to me. Amen. Here's another one. Here's another one. Is there any doubt? Romans 14, 23. Is there any doubt? You, it, there's a saying. Again, I don't know who, who, who first said it. I give them credit. But the saying is, if it's doubtful, it's dirty. If you've got doubts in your mind, whether it's right or not, you're always best not to do it. It's always best to, to counsel or to choose the safe side, amen, in whether or not something's dirty or whether or not something should be done. God knows your heart, amen. Even if it's okay if you refrain from it because you think it might be dirty, you think it might be wrong, God will bless you for it, amen. Amen, there's some truth in that. Next, number eight. What would a godly Christian do in the same situation? If they were faced with the choice you were faced with, what would they do? What would my, what, what would my pastor do? What would my godly mama do? Or my godly grandmother, my godly pawpaw do? What would they do if faced with that same choice? You say, well, well preacher, I, I just have a hard time making, making decisions. Well, here's some good advice. When you don't know which way to go and you don't feel like you've got the wisdom or the smarts to make the right decision, borrow somebody else's wisdom. There's safety in the multitude of counsel. Seek someone wiser than you, someone, someone you consider more spiritual than you and ask them what they would do in that situation. That's good counsel. That will help you make good decisions. Amen. So, let me give you this last couple here. There's a couple more here I want to give you. Number nine, I think that's where we're at. Decide slowly. Take your time. One of the biggest mistakes that the youth make is they rush in, have to have it now, has to be done now, should have been done yesterday, right now, right now, right now. Rash decisions. Sometimes you're better off just being patient and waiting. 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 Now there is a thing of waiting too long, I understand that, but you're waiting for the Lord. You're waiting to make sure it's right. You're waiting to make sure everything's what it should be. You rush in and get married to the wrong person, that could ruin your life. Just because you, you don't want to die old maid. 
you feel like they'll get a better offer if they if you don't marry them right away. Take your time. That's a big decision. Make sure what you're getting into. Oh, I, I'll never get another job. I'll never get another opportunity for a job like this. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Don't get in so big a hurry and act so quickly. When I make a big purchase most of the time, it takes place over months, if not years. You say, years? Yeah. That had been something I wanted for years, but I couldn't justify getting it because I didn't really need it. It wasn't a wise decision to do it. I, as a father of young children at home and a wife, wife was staying home homeschooling. I was the only income at the time, so I couldn't justify doing it. Was it something I really wanted? Yes, it was something I really wanted. Was it something I could get? Yes, it was within my means, but it wouldn't have been wise. So I waited. And I waited. And I prayed. And the Lord opened the door for me to get what I wanted. And I got it. And it was a blessing. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. That's being patient. Had I jumped in and, and went dead, I probably would have paid more for one. Probably wouldn't have had God's blessings on it. Probably would have given me trouble. Probably got me in trouble. Probably got me killed, to be honest with you. But anything like that. So be patient. And here's the final one. And I hate to even say this one. But never make a decision when your decision maker is clouded. Never make a decision when you're high, when you're drunk, when you're hurting from a breakup or, or, or fired from a job. When you're clouded, your mind's clouded, don't make a decision. Don't make a decision. Many have ruined their marriages, lost their jobs, quit church in times where they were clouded. Bad decisions lead to poor results. If you want successful life as a Christian, you want God's blessings on your life, you want to marry the person that God wants for you, you want to find the job God wants for you, you want to live the life that God wants for you, Make wise choices. And make them today and every day. Make wise choices. Kids, I wish somebody would have set me down when I was younger and told me this. Because I've made some dumb ones. I've made some dumb ones. Not as dumb as my wife. <laughs> she married me. Hey, how much dumber can you get than that? Hey, Amen. But, 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 she's, but she ain't me and me, brother. You heard something. <laughs> I will throw something at you. But anyway, but you know what I'm saying. Make wise choices. Make wise choices. Life can be great with God's blessings. Or it can be hell on earth. And the choices you make today especially you younger ones, teenagers just getting ready to graduate, just getting ready to find your the love of your life. Be careful and make wise choices. Make wise choices. Father, I want to thank you for your word. And I want